Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen. With me on the show today, Debbie G and Neo Positivity. This is your daily dose of happy. We are so happy you decided to join us today. And we're happy to be uh, online and live after two straight days where we got knocked off in the middle of doing the podcast. That's not going to happen anymore. I don't care what kind of crazy energy happens here because I got what? myself, I got myself a backup UPS that's going to supply continuous power no matter what happens. So bring on the energy shift. We're going to be okay. It's going to be good. No, yeah. seriously, guys, we we, lo- we completely lost uh, contact uh, the last two shows in a row, oh, right? three quarters of the way through. It was crazy. Oh man, there's yeah. some crazy energy happening right now. We are there experiencing. Is. Oh my God, it's it. There's a lot of stuff coming up and out and. Mm-hmm. Whoo, so actually, because there's a lot of stuff coming up and, and out and everything, I, I, Neo, you know, one of the things about Neo positivity, if you all have been to his events, you know what he's really good at? He's really good at raising the vibration. No kidding. So yeah, we're, Neo, why don't you, yeah, why don't you just pop us right into that and, and put some tune on and like get us, get us driving. <laughs> um, just listen. How many times have you been wrong? And guessing what's going to happen when I'm going to have this job and I'm going to be married. You got to get rid of all that. Just let it go. There's got to be a point where you just stop. A lot of people need to break a bone or something and be sat down for months before they have that realization that this moment is so beautiful. It's so important. Yep. Um, don't wait until you break a bone for that stuff. Don't wait until you cut your finger to realize how much you need this finger. I always hated that. You know, um, <laughs> be better. Try to be better every day and just smile as much as you can. Just smile, smile, smile. If you ever stop and just pause, you're going to start appreciating things. Do that more often and just smile. <laughs> life is precious. Now, I got some stories for you guys today, for some updates, everything. It's just life is just very precious. Well, we got to get to the up. I mean, there's a lot of stuff to report on today. We have a whole yeah. ton. So let, let's just start working through it because otherwise this could go on for three hours. And we only have an hour to do this in. So first right, and foremost, I, I gotta, I gotta just kind of set the stage. When's the next Neo Summit? When's the next one happening, Neo? We, we were doing it every month and, um, every year I take the summer off from everything. And, mm-hmm. uh, so we, I want to skip July plus I'm moving. That's some whole nother stuff that was going on. A whole oh my goodness. Month. Uh, so yeah, all that's going on and we might start doing it every 60 days. Some things are lining up perfectly every other month. No, okay. And uh, it was beginning to be a lot. So we might shift back to doing it every month once I have more uh, people to do a lot of the ins and outs for sure. me. You know, but uh, so now, for now, we're going to skip July. The next one's going to be August 21st. All right. We got Dan Mangana is going to be uh, co-hosting with me this time. He's gonna be Dan bringing, the man. Yeah, he's going to be Dan bringing every, awesome. everybody he can with him and uh, a few people that he spoke with on another Law of Attraction Summit. Uh, I spoke with two so far and um we're gonna lock all that down i'll be able to put them on a website on the landing page neozloasummit.com that's the landing page and so that's just beautiful that's some beautiful things and the october summit after that is going to be even more wild because i'm going to be at the biggest dental conference on the planet and i'm going to be up there in a, doing another contest up there called dentistry's got talent it's like um America's got talent, but it's in front of uh, dental people. So it's crazy. Just imagine 50 people all giving a five minute segment and a couple hundred investors watching. And so like the rest of the day, you're just in, you're just talking to investor after investor as after investor for, and you do this for three days and it's insane. Um, so that's just the small part. That's, that's a huge part. But of the things that are happening that weekend, that's that's just a chunk. And um, the future is just looking amazing. It's looking amazing. It really is. So is the present, actually. The present is looking absolutely incredible. It's just an amazing present we're in right now, I think, anyway, despite the fact that it's been a, a roller coaster lately for me. But still, it's an amazing present. And uh, just hello to Joe. Joe's saying hello to everybody. So hello, hey. Joe. Glad you could join us today. Hey, Joe. Good hey, stuff. look. It's the present, Walt. It is. That's present. The present is in the present. That's right. The present is in the present. I want to. I want to get you guys in my mind frame for the past sixty days, while okay. while the summit's going on. So in the beginning of June, I get notice that because uh, I'm renting since I've been in Florida, I've been renting uh, for the past few years, 
and I never rented before really. Like I've owned almost my entire life <laughs> in my first apartment. So it's a whole new experience. And it's like, it's cool. Something breaks, you call somebody else, they fix it. You don't have to worry about it, you know. But there's also this thing that happens, and it's called signing a new lease agreement. <laughs> <laughs> so all of June, I get noticed that uh, they're selling the house. I got to find a new place to live. Mm-hmm. While the summit's going, while everything in life is going on. And so in Florida's on this boom, they're selling houses fifty to $80,000 above asking price. Oh, yeah. And yeah. every house I looked at from June – Beginning of June till mid June, every house I looked at was gone by the time wow. I called them. Yeah. So now I'm at I'm panic mode. I need some place for my family to stay. What am I gonna do? I got all mm. this stuff. I have a lot of stuff. Uh, big old house. So I'm like, what am I gonna do? Everything I look at is gone. And I get a magic phone call. Well, I made a magic phone call asking if I can, you know, what's gonna happen if I can't leave? Can I get an extension? I know they're gonna raise the rent like four hundred bucks or whatever because they do that if you rent up. So anyway. Then the guy tells me the golden thing. You actually have until July 31st. Ah. I got a new lease on life. I manifested that. I'm feeling amazing. So from June 15th, we had the summit on the 17th. My daughter's birthday was the same day. Um, all that stuff happened. So I've been looking. Every house I've looked at was gone mm. that day. Oh, they go fast these days. Here, that- here in Connecticut, too. Every day I've looked at a house. Every day I've inquired about a house since June 15th. Mm-hmm. It wasn't until two days ago. Uh oh! And I have to thank the host of my last, uh, the host of my last summit, Andrew Cat. I was looking at one of his videos, and he said, uh, "The universe is always conspiring in my favor." And I said, <laughs> "I love that." I've said, I've said, "I have to incorporate that affirmation into my life, especially in these times." And but it wasn't until he said, "Comment that below." And I was like, yeah, you know, whatever. I did my affirmation. I did it a couple of times. And I said, no, you know what? I'm going to support my boy. You know, every comment is a good comment. So I commented. To sure. me. And once I got done tapping it out, once I hit enter, something happened. Mm. And here, there was an explosion that was 10 times more energy filled than any time I had ever done that affirmation. So I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of typing things now. And, uh, Henry, my boy, Henry, he had broken down for me as far as like, outside of verbally releasing it, something about it coming through your fingers that does something more. So anyway, the whole affirmation was different for me. The whole, not affirmation, but the term, the sentence. And I said it a couple more times and I was like, it is. Yeah. I started using my oneness with God and me always trying to, you know, help and improve. And I started lining things up in my life and I just ended up in an amazing headspace. No lie. Like less than an hour, about 47 minutes later, I get an email saying you're approved. Nice. Because there was this one house I had looked at it. It kind of just popped up at the perfect timing and it said zero days on the market. And I clicked on it and it was no pictures, but there was pictures from the past. I was just like, let me get it. I threw the application in. He said I was approved. So, so th- and so now I got this great new tool. And then there was this weight, this sixty days worth of weight that I had on my chest was just. And it's it was, lifted. Like, you know, I still haven't told Andrew. Thank you. It was like something told me watch this video because I hadn't wow. seen it before that. And I was just like, let me stop. It's a twenty minute video. Like, Seventeen minutes. I was like, no, let me go. Let me listen. Con- and it was it was titled for anybody who wants to see it. Of, Congratulations, uh, by the way. That's great. That's well, first of all, I love fast manifestation, but that's a great one. I love that. Instead of paranoia, it's pro noia. So paranoia is when you uh-huh. it's conspiring against you, and pro noia is when you're in the state of mind that the universe is conspiring for you, with you. And um, that was the whole basis, and, and I loved it. That was an amazing turn of events, and it just led to a couple of meetings that were amazing after that, including one with Dan. And, uh, yeah, so I'm on cloud nine right now. I'm on cloud Excellent. nine. <laughs> Excellent. Really good. Oh, that's fabulous. The and, wait, uh, the quick, quick hello to Katrina. Hello, back. John. Hello, Julie. Just want to get those hellos in there. John, Thank you for joining us Julie. today. Oh, my God. I haven't seen John and Julie in a minute. I love them. You know, John is <laughs> from the UK. Uh, I love that Katrina, Katrina just put that up. And I also typed it into the chat. I want to suggest that anybody that's watching right now, go ahead and type in the chat exactly what Neo said. The universe is always conspiring for me. Mm. The universe is always, it's, it's, I put in for us, but in my favor, in my so favor. Oh, here. is it just oh. like, oh, it just hits me different. I don't know. It's just, just be, be just me, but it's like, uh, it's like a beautiful machine gun just hit me in my chest. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. And, and we've got Ellie here. I, I hey love there, Ellie. Ellie. 
So I'm loving this, guys. Okay, seriously. So I'm going to tell you about my manifestation. All right. This is, this is been, Manifest Friday, I can tell. Manifest Friday. I have been, yeah. I have been a, a go-go bunny. Like I've had people here. I've been out of town, whatever, whatever. And I'm getting ready to, I'm getting ready right now to get onto the show. Now I, I haven't used my headphones. I couldn't find the one thing because they're cordless and all this. And I'm like, ah, geez. Well, I'm just going to finish getting ready and, there was the important part about something that just came up and, and I don't know if you all caught this, but Neo talked about it and I'm going to talk about it. And that's the art of letting go. The art of getting out of your way and not creating an interference. Step out of the way. And what Neo did is he got out, he got out of the way. He got out of the way for things to happen by his knowingness, by his internal knowingness and his willingness to accept things as they were and make the best of it without seeing it as being the worst of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And whenever we do that, magic happens. My magic may not as be as big right now at this moment, but I'm going to tell you it did just happen. So I'm thinking to myself, forget it. I'm going to use my old ones and not worry about it and finish getting ready. Practice the art of non-interference, getting out of my way. I'm not going into shit. Blah, 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 blah. Right? Mm -hmm. Guess what happens, y'all? Guess what happens? You know what happened. Oh, right? yeah. I'm putting my face on because I have to put this thing on my face. <laughs> I look in. I, I swear to you, this is so hilarious. I've looked everywhere. I, I'm like, done. I'm good. We're going to go forward no matter what. And sure enough, that little piece I need is the receiver. It's in my makeup case. And I'm like, well, that was a smart place to put that, Debbie. You didn't put that. But it shows up. And I went, it, it's simple as that. When you let go of the attachment to what something needs to be. And what Neil was doing was letting go of an attachment to what everything needed to look like. The willingness to make, to, to be in, in, in your best self no matter what, and to just allow the, the flow of humanity, the flow of being human to happen. I just love the fact you got out of your way. I mean, isn't it amazing how fast it happens too? I mean, when you get out of the way like that, it just, it's instant oh, almost. Yeah. It's I, not good. Two things on that packages. Yeah. If yeah. you ever want a package from Amazon or anywhere to get there early, let it go. It will come a day early. I'm <laughs> but I wanted, to, I wanted to key in on this. I think one of my biggest weapons in this fight I've been in mentally, uh, as far as losing shelter. <laughs> <laughs> or gaining it, depending on the viewpoint. <laughs> For the past you know, 30, 45 days or whatever, too. 40 days. Um, it was, you're constantly calculating. Hmm. You know, especially in this, if it was a financial thing, it's like, okay, I go over my books and I see what I got and I work with it. But this was different. This was like, yeah. you see the house, is it still there? You see the house. And then you mm -hmm. got this backtrack of 30, the past 30 houses disappearing like that. Um, all those things working against me. So I was constantly coming up with ways to combat, combat these external circumstances. Mm -hmm. But it was mm -hmm. when, and this was the fight, waking up to that. Stopping that calculation I was doing. How would I handle? Okay, so tomorrow I'm going to approach it this way. Waking up from that very thought and realizing, I got this. All this, <laughs> external stuff, this is little tests and games. I've been through them before. It's, none of that even matters. It's how I'm responding to all these things that matters. And it's waking up to that and ending those. Some of those what-if scenarios could have been seen as problem solvers. I need to find out how to get through this. And I'm not saying don't do problem solving and be prepared in the future, but you don't have to dwell on it. And in my situation, mm -hmm. there was, there was no final like thing I could do to make this happen. I was pursuing house after house. So it was just like a crapshoot kind of, so mine was a little bit different than if you're like trying to obtain a goal or something like that. But the way it was coming at me was just all day, every day, especially because it was shelter in my house. How am I going to, and I got a lot of stuff. So it's like, it was just all day, every day. And waking up to that as often as I possibly could remember to get out of that mind frame, to wake up from it, because it's hard. 
It's hard. Oh, yeah. You used to be walking around, running scenarios all freaking day long, 60,000 of them. It's yeah. Hard to wake up. But that was the toughest part. And I think that's what yielded those results. It was like, oh, they, no were, doubt. It's like they were waiting in a huge balloon to be popped. And then when Andrew said what he said and I typed it, the balloon popped. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I've been experiencing the same thing in the Thai boot camp because, um, and, and this was actually a point of conversation. Debbie, you may have seen this because you're in the group there. Um, the Thai boot camp group was talking about how as you, you do the work, it's, it's like the whole series, the, the stream speeds up, but the flow of stuff yeah. speeds up. Everything gets faster and faster and faster. And that's what you were, you were experiencing in terms of the real estate market, which is certainly pretty hot right now. It's really flowing really, really fast, but it's really true in anything. I mean, at the moment that we get into that better space, all of a sudden everything speeds up and it can be disorienting. It can be really disorienting because, oh my God, this stuff's happening so fast. How do I react to that? Right? Yep. You guys, look, I, I, I just, I love this because this is the real stuff in life. I mean, let's, let's, I, I want to, all of us to share some empathy in what you went through, Neo, because let's face it, as a human being, that's a, that's a thing. I mean, it's a real thing and you're a man and this is your family. I'm imagining what was real for you right now. And I'm loving how you came to terms with, even with that, it's the response. Do you all think we're in control of anything really other than our, other than our responses? That's, Which is everything that, by the way. That's a huge wake up point. Yeah. Like that's, that is, if I didn't have that, I wouldn't be who I am. I would have never retired. Of course. Yeah. I got stressed. Okay. Look, y'all. So I, I, I got, I got, I got all up in myself when it comes to our children, that control thing. That mm-hmm. wanting, wanting certain things. And when they're like full grown adults, like, <laughs> God, it doesn't go away. <laughs> no, it doesn't. And, no. And what I think, what I think is irrelevant, right? <laughs> So I got stretched with some stuff and it's not important what it was. What is important is I had to do that same thing. You got to let, I had to let it go because look, what is it that I actually control ever, ever, ever? Look, I know I'm going to die one day. Do y'all know you're going to croak at some point? I've been told that. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, that's at some point, like, you know, you're going to croak. Can you control when that actually happens? Any of us. I believe you do, actually. But well, of course, the the well, I'm talking about in the physical. What I'm trying to make, a, I'm trying to make a point to the fact that we, as human beings, do we we think we control stuff when really we're we're manipulating the energy. We're not controlling it, but we're creating it. We're creating what we want. We create our life. Mm-hmm. Controlling it is that old, that old paradigm of holding on to some shit that you think you need. Right. Or you think you whatever. I'm going to guarantee you that when we let go, you're going to get better than you ever thought you could have. No doubt. Absolutely true. Because, and, and, and that's, that's why I say that. I do, and I know I was being extreme, but the fact is, is that we really don't have that control. Rather, the only control we have is over how we're responding. Neo, that's the only thing you changed and everything changed around you. Mm -hmm. It's true. So I'm looking at it saying everything's changed around me when I change my perspective and the way that I'm seeing it. And that's all that Neo was saying. He's still he's not belittling the fact that he's got this this thing that's up in front of his face. But he's saying to y'all, hey, it's how how he's going about it, how he's approaching it. When I woke up one day and realized that what was working for me once no longer worked for me, I decided that maybe it might be time to start doing it differently. Yeah, that's 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 a true wake up call, because that's when you realize that the universe is giving you some information that's not quite what you were expecting. And now you got to deal with it. Now you got to say, okay, this isn't what I was expecting. What do I do? Oh, next? it's a kick, it's a kick in the ass. I'm not it is. It's not. A lot of people are going to resist hmm. that type of change. So if you guys ever, anybody listening ever has to get this point across to somebody and they're not 
wanting to change, like they're content with where they are or whatever. They, they think that's, a, they think their recipe right now is success. And you're looking at them like, no, it isn't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is the no. nice, I think the nicest way to do it is just to tell them like, listen, if you make a hundred thousand dollars this year, if you want to make 200,000 next year, something's going to have to change. Mm. Can't keep doing the same thing or you're going to make a hundred again. That's the only way I've been able to nicely get it across <laughs> to the people of that type of mindset. But it's the, it's the control. That book, The Untethered Soul, I'm not telling you, that book changed everything for me. But the guy talks about us gaining control over situations. And I think about me being a pilot. I was scared to fly my entire life. and But I've, I've been obsessed with the thought of flying. So when I went to take the lessons, I was pulled up to the building and I was like, wait a minute, what the hell am I doing? I'm the guy who's scared to get on the plane. But it's it. <laughs> I guess it's now more comfortable because I know what the plane can do if this, such, such, and how we could survive the situation. So anyway, when we first see something, our brain just wants to gain as much control over the situation as it can. Right. Like, And when we feel like we're not in control, we feel like we're not at ease, we can't be at peace. And that's what you're talking about, getting rid of. And it takes right, that right. level of understanding that you're not in control. Anyway, I tell people, you think you know what your kids are going to be doing tomorrow? Like, yeah, I know, I know exactly where they're going to be tomorrow. Well, not if we get hit by a meteor today and their world ends. So you don't yeah. know what tomorrow is. You don't know what's going to happen. You think you know. Well, we don't know of anything. My wife was watching a TV program last night. I couldn't tell you what it was. I have no idea. But I saw one scene. And in that scene, there was a group of people sitting around picking cocktails and having a conversation. And one of them says, um, do your kids listen to you? And the guy says, oh, yeah, they listen to me all day long. And then they do the opposite of what I say. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and and you got to get more, you get more, listen, we got to, when it comes to these kids, we get, we get more hunt, uh, bees with honey. This is true. I mean, for real. You need, like, you need, and you need a special level of honey these days because the honey that worked when we were kids ain't the honey that works, man. Well, actually, that's true with it. Yeah, no, we are seeing a big change all over the world. How that we view ourselves, self-love. I mean, let's get, <clears throat> if you love yourself enough, if you love yourself enough, are you going to continue to do things that make your heart sad? I think the people that don't know how to get out and think that's just how it's going to be the rest of their life, I think they accept it. They still I think know. that. And that's why I love that we're showing up here because it is to say that there is another way. It is to say that we can do it differently. That's the whole point of these conversations and us sharing everything because, you know, you, you don't know something till you know it, period. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know something till you know it, then that means take it easy on yourself. You know, I haven't been in any situation that really wasn't just my absolute desire to be loved or to be seen or to be heard. You know, and when I'm trying to control shit, it's because I'm not feeling I'm not feeling within me. I'm not self nurturing. I'm not self caring about me. When I'm needing to seek outside of me to to make some shit happen out of me, you know, somebody else's stuff, it's because I'm not focusing on the most important person in my life, which is myself. Y'all are the most important person in your life, and you think, well, no, those are my kids. Well, no, that's just codependent. Now stop that. <laughs> if you if you don't make yourself the most important person on this planet, then nobody else can be important to you. If you don't learn how to love yourself fully, you will never love anybody fully. Yeah, well, no, I love my kids unconditionally. Oh, really? Do you judge what they do? I just did. I judged. I, I was judging some decisions. <clears throat> that doesn't mean I'm agreeing yet at all. But that's not the issue. Mm -hmm. OK, yeah, it's not. So. When we want, to, when we, we want to be that that we're, we're seeking. We don't want to go out and seek it and think we're going to find it. If we're that to start with, then it's going to find us. Do you understand? So, it will so attract let's try, everything like a magnet. Let's try applying this then to a particular situation because we had an email from a listener, a longtime listener named Jason, and he's, yeah. he's, he's dealing with some stuff and he wrote in to ask for some help. So let me read the email and then let's see if we can help him out. He says, hello again to Walt and the rest of the LOA team. I'm in a bad way, and I wish to ask you, my mentors, if there's a light. It all started late last month. I work at a not-so-great position at a warehouse in a smaller town. I want to leave badly. I want to travel, 
And most importantly, I want to feel happy again. I love my fiance more than anything. She means the world to me. I feel like I'm spiraling. I was doing a little better when I last messaged you all, but now I don't know. I want to manifest so badly to reap the successes of affirmative thought. I want to take her on trips, build a family with her, and just feel like I'm getting the most out of life. So I guess my question is, is there any steps to remove all doubt and also not feel the burden of procrastination and fear anymore? I want to love life again. I want to feel like a positive young adult. I'm 24. Thank you again for all you do at the LOA team, for everything you all do for the world. May positivity be in your favor. So what do you guys think? I love that. I love that. I want to first congratulate him in taking the first steps, which is trusting your intuition. He's obviously looking for a way out of Mm -hmm. his current situation. His intuition said, you know what? Reach out. I'll just watch videos. Reach out. Get a real yeah. solid manager for you. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. kudos to you for taking that first step and reaching out to us. And with that being the first step of what's about to happen, it's it's the light. It's the spark. You know? So I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm right, I'm over here taking notes. So I'm gonna let y'all go ahead and do y'all thing. <laughs> okay. I I'm I'm loving this. So let's All right. I love this young man. Twenty four, such a precious age. And Mm -hmm. so Neo's already touched on it, and that's practices. When we want to change what our reality is, it does require actionable steps. It requires taking an action. Our thoughts, the way I shifted personally was I shifted to a more grateful way of being, a grateful Mm -hmm. beingness. Today, I had a memory from three years ago. It says, grateful to be me and grateful to inspire others to be themselves. What I know is that as long as you see your life as not being what you love, then you're going to experience a life you don't love. When we choose to start being an appreciation for where our life sits on how it looks right now, this very moment, And to be okay with that. And I did this with nowhere to go, not owning a car, with my son in the car uh, just a few years ago as he was uh, just entering into his world of sobriety. I chose to get happy right the hell where I was. No idea what we were going to do. No idea how we were going to make it. Just knowing that we would. We would. But I chose to get happy then. Happiness is a choice. It's a state of being. And How do you, when you feel yourself spiraling down, that's because we're stuck in a mode, at least in my world, I was stuck in a mode of thinking the world was working against me. Let's go back over to what Neo started us with and the universe that's conspiring in our favor. But this is a shift and your practice that I recommend is to start doing that shift, to start picking one thing every day, one person every day that you can feel that deep appreciation in your heart for. You see, if you want to bring yourself up the spiral, then it also requires how that your perspective and how that you see things, it requires it changes. If you can't be grateful for something, find something you can be. Find someone, but find something to anchor in the appreciation factor into your foundation of your life. Knowing, knowing, knowing that you are right where you should be, even if you think it doesn't look like it. You are just simply in a holding spot getting ready to go to your next location. The, and, and I love that you love your girlfriend. And I think that I, I think that's beautiful, sweetheart. However, I'm going to say it, loving yourself is more important. If you want to give this young lady everything she could ever want, then love yourself to the fullest capacity of everything that you can do. Give to yourself the very thing that you think you want to give to her. And in return, you're going to see that reflected back in your relationships and connection. That's, that's where I'd start your daily practices. So daily practices are huge Mm -hmm. and I heard a lot, another thing that I heard a lot of when, when I, when you were reading that, Walt, is a lot of not seeing yourself in the beauty that you are and the light that you are. And that's where our I am statements come in and our affirmations come in. Even when we don't believe them, it's so important to 
I am it. I am that I am is the name of God in the book of Genesis. My sister is watching right now. I actually had a conversation with her this morning about this. Mm. Um, we were we were talking about some things that were actually quite difficult, if you all want to know the truth. In fact, um, it's always difficult to go into conversation about things that um, need a shift. OK, but I was talking about the I am and the presence of I am in your life. I am before anything that I am that I am is the name of God, then I am is part of you. Tapping into source through speaking about yourself in a positive light, not I am stupid, because what is that reinforcing? Mm. And how does that even feel? Not good. (laughs) So how does I. I am beautiful. I am. I am vivacious. I am a rock star. I am worthy. Mm -hmm. I am, I am healthy and wealthy and I am all those things. I integrate those things, but just starts with the simple process of a step. And that's all I'm recommending is you just take, change a couple little things on your morning routine and start getting yourself into a practice that's going to give you give you that opportunity to see things differently by creating the shift for yourself. The only block you've got is you. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. That's good stuff. I'm going to bring in something else too, from our friend, Dan Mangana, because he he talks about something called a check-in. That's what he calls it anyway. Basically you do exactly that. You check in, you take a little quick inventory periodically throughout your day. Some people actually like to set a, you know, a, an alarm on their phones or something like that to remind them, okay, it's time to do another check-in. I, I actually don't do it with alarms, but I do it anyway. I just make it a practice to go through my day, you know, check in with myself every once in a while. How am I doing? And if I'm not doing so good, if I'm in that bad way that Jason's talking about, then I do something to shift my vibe back up the spiral again. Now, I have to say, this actually came up for me in Pad Boot Camp this week. I, I was on Module 2 at the time. I just switched over to module three. So I got through this, but on module two, I was having, that's one of the exercises that you do, right? Debbie, I mean, you, you learn how do you pull yourself back up the spiral? And, yeah, I was you do. It, and sometimes it was working and sometimes I couldn't quite get there. I was too far down. Uh, and then David shared a hack in the, uh, the group that happened this week. He, the, the hack is one that he says he's got to put, put in as a, an actual module at some point, but the hack is pretty simple. It's a three step hack. First step is you do something that doesn't require a whole lot of thought, something kind of mindless, ironing, doing the dishes, something really, really simple to do that doesn't require any thought at all. And and what that's doing is it's actually slowing your mind down while you just do something to kind of work through slowing your mind down. And then after you've done the dishes or done the ironing or whatever, then you do three to five things that you're grateful for. You do the appreciation thing that Deborah was just talking about. And you say, okay, yeah, I'm so, I'm appreciative that, well, first of all, I just do the dishes. The dishes are clean. And I, I love the fact that I've learned this new hack and so I can start applying this new hack every day. And you just kind of work through them, you know, do three to four or five of them, something like that. And what I've actually found, I haven't even gotten to the third step and I'm already at the spiral. But if you're not quite there yet, the third step is to take a little time to meditate. Because when you're meditating from that position, now you're not meditating from deep down in despair. You're not meditating from depression, from frustration or from anger. You're meditating much more closer to the neutral spot, which is where you're trying to get with meditation. And then once you get into that neutral spot, that's where source energy is able to pull you back up again. It can't pull you up when you're too far down. So you have to meditate to get yourself to that spot so that it can help pull you back up. And you know what? The damn thing works. It works better than any any other combination I've come up with so far. I love the fact that David gave us that particular hack this week. Nice. I love that. I, I love Taya Boot Camp, y'all, because it rocks like hardcore. I I was I was years into my spiritual walk and took Taya. Ta- Taya is for everybody. Taya is one of those things. T- trust your abundance. It's one of those things that gives you practices and tools that you need. Um, and it's like being in school. Okay. It's boot camp. It's like being in school. You, you'd have, it's time to, you got to do your homework, do the practices and uncover what it is that you need to, to just be the best version of you you can be. You are the best version of you you can be. But tomorrow I'm going to be an even better version of I am right, that I am right now. And that's my goal. 
am than I am right now. I, I am that I am. <laughs> I am that I am. I am that I am. All right, you, know? you guys ready for the master list? Uh oh, here we go. Run down in the spirit of manifesting. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm rocking this shirt. Um, it's always light. I know sometimes it might feel like there's no light. There's always light. You just gotta open your eyes. Right now, your eyes are closed. That's why you ain't seeing it. Um, spending too much time out there instead of in here. So you kind of got to flip it, open your eyes, but you guys get what I'm saying. Um, your job. You want to leave your job? You don't know if you want to leave? Just think back to the last time you had a job that you liked, a supervisor that you liked, you enjoyed yourself. Spend some time in that headspace. Yes. Spring seeds. Uh, same thing with traveling. The last great vacation you were on, spend some time there in your mind. You want to be happy. Think of times you were happy. Same thing with your marriage. You want your marriage to be better. If you want your marriage to be better while your toes are in the sand, spend your time there. If you feel like you're spiraling, spiraling is a state of mind. You know, I, you know, for the past 60 days, 40 days, whatever, I've been feeling like I'm spiraling. I'm losing my dag on shelter. But when it was time for El Sexo, guess what? <laughs> I'm thinking about them houses no more. You know, and if you change your mind that easy, then you can change your mind that easy. So just understand that it's just a state of mind. Uh, Did job. you just say El Sexo? El Sexo, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. You really think you're going to say that? It's like going to fly past. Like, I'm not. Uh, that is please so don't right. I love uh, that. It's so cute. <laughs> you're, yeah, I, I'll, just, I'll just tell you this. You're good. Okay, your future is in your hands. In the spirit of manifesting, you're here. You came to us for the house. You took that the help. You took that step, and that's that was a huge one. And so mm -hmm. now we're here, just know that the path you've laid out, regardless of whose voices bring you information, is that winning path. You're on it. You're in control. It might not seem like it right now, but you're going to get what you want, just not in your timing, maybe. Mm -hmm. So just stay patient. But above all, you know. Like Debbie was saying, everything that's happening right now is perfect. You're the perfect body weight, the perfect health for this moment. See that. And worry about the ace that you don't have in your hand. You've been dealt the cards. Play your cards. Um, somebody said something about a holding pattern. <laughs> when you're in an airplane, and it made me think of this analogy, when you're in an airplane, when you're going to land, if something's happening where you can't land, let, yeah, it puts you in a holding pattern. And you got to wait and if you're running low on gas, you're getting a little worried. You're in this airplane just circling around. You know, <laughs> oh, airplane, my God. You know, you start to get worried. But guess what? TSA know how much gas you got. They're going to get you there. You know, that, so if you got to hold on to a, a mentality like that, um, hold, hold on to that. And if not, if anything, I like to use fear. If you don't manifest loving your life, loving yourself, in other words, if you hate yourself, I would say that your spouse is going to start to hate you too. Because vice versa, the more that you love yourself, the more people around you are going to love you. So you that's don't true. have a choice but to change your mindset because that's what's on the line. Your work ain't on the line. Your sanity ain't on the line. Forget about all that. Her. That's the reason to wake up every morning. That's what you, you will lose that. If you put that in your mind, that'll help you wake up from that negativity and shift the process, process just as easy. And uh, the reminders, I have like a bunch of reminders that go off my watch all day to make sure I stay on point mentally and remind mm -hmm. me to do my mental exercises because I just can't remember because the days just happened. The last thing I wrote on here, it basically was everything I just said. Uh, what is it I want? You know, what is it I, what, I, what is it I do want? Anyway, that's what it is. Anytime I run a scenario, a negative scenario, I'm like, wait a minute, what is it I, I do want to happen? That's mm -hmm. what I mean. What is it I do want to happen in that situation? And that's where I spend my headspace. And I've ordered the hell out of that seed until where there once was nothing, there's now something physical in front of me. Yeah. And that's that's how you're gonna have to do this. Use fear to make sure that you're you know that every second you spend in that head case. That headspace. <laughs> okay, so I, I think that was the best blooper you had all day. Either way, it worked great. The <laughs> more time you spend in that head case, uh, the worst things you're going to get. Let that be your driving factor and then use everything else I just said after you wake up from that depression-type thought process. 
And I, I'm really convinced that uh, Jason's actually probably going to be listening to the episode today just because he sent the email yesterday. I actually sent him a quick email back with a little link to something to help get him going until we did the show today. So I'm pretty sure he's going to be listening in today. And that means there's just enough time to tell him about something because if you're looking for a way to get a lift, there's a really good way to do it tomorrow. Tomorrow, the stream is doing their second virtual summit. And if you want a quick way to get yourself well, quick, it's a four hour summit, four hours of channeling the stream. I mean, I don't know how David does it, to be perfectly honest. Four hours of channeling? That's that's a lot of channeling going on. But he, he, channeling. he pulls it off. It's amazing. But anyone who's tuned in and listening to it, you're going to find a huge lift in your vibe just by tuning into that thing. I think it's only like $97 to get in, and it is worth every single minute of being a part of it. It runs tomorrow from that's uh, Saturday, July 10, 2021 from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Pacific time. So that would be 12 noon to 4 p.m. New York time. And any other time zone, you're going to have to do the calculation yourself. I can't do it for 24 time zones. Sorry, I'm just not good, that good. But the point is, you can you can tune in. You can be a part of that event. And I, I think one of the biggest thing about, I mean, I've seen it with, with Neil's events, any kind of summit like this, when you get a large number of people involved in that summit, you feel that energy. It's It's palpable. It's something you can touch. It lifts you. Yeah, Neil was just doing this lifting thing with his hands. It right. It just lifts you right up. And, and it doesn't matter where you're at. It'll just pull you. You could be at the depths of despair, and it'll pull you back up just by tuning into something like that. So yeah, yeah. check out and, the, and actually, the, the free virtual summit too. Yep. You guys better hurry up if you haven't joined. It's a hundred bucks, and you better get get with it. Get 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 jiggy with it. Seriously, like get on it. I posted something just a minute ago because Neo. Made me think of it. gratitude opens up the flow of positive energy. Oh yeah, yeah. That's when the yeah, because when you're smiling, that's when the the flow is at its widest, and gratitude just brings that smile. Mm-hmm. I never see yeah. say thank you upset. <laughs> well, no, if they're being sarcastic. <laughs> but well, no, yeah, but, but is I, I, amazing. I love that because when you when you choose to smile, even like if you can just make yourself smile, I swear to you, you are so right, Neo, because I have pulled myself out of a flunk by just simply smiling, by by bringing, you know, it, there's something about smiling that actually sends off neuro signals to your brain that everything's good. You see, that's the cool part is you want to, your brain is constantly reacting. And when you get stuck in that whole holding pattern, the way to break it is to know that, 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 that TWA knows how much gas you have. Mm-hmm. So in other words, you let go, but the way to, I mean, you just get into that space that don't be a head case. Use your head space. Oh my God. <laughs> Neo, I don't even know. That was like, it was the best blooper ever. <laughs> I, I want to think back on that real quick. Last, this is just yesterday in the shower. I, I just want everyone to try this. Probably don't do it in front of other people. I don't know. But if you ever catch yourself smiling and kind of like laughing because you're so happy about the current situation, just separate your teeth about a half an inch. Now, it's going to seem weird because you're like, I would never laugh like this in public. You know, it's just it's too aggressive or <laughs> whatever. But when you open them just to have it does. So I don't know why it does something else, but I am eager to do it again. And again, I don't know. I don't know why. Well, I think it's the difference between a, a tight laugh and a loose laugh. When you're when you're, yeah. you're relaxed, you, you, your mouth opens <laughs> up, you just feel more calm and you feel more joy coming through. So you're basically teasing your mind and thinking, oh, yeah, I'm already in that relaxed state. That's why I'm able to open my mouth like that when I'm laughing. And I think I feel like, um, you know how certain things you could project project from your gut? Like in karate, there was kia, and then I was like, ah, where you just came from your gut with it. I think once you open up, you kind of like the laughter comes from a deeper physical place. I don't, I'm going to mm-hmm. explore it and get into it and, and have a real something for you guys next time I talk. But I'm, it felt amazing. I know that. And it, it felt like it was new. Like, I guess every time I laughed, I, you know, I don't know. It's just, yeah, it was just something else. No, I, I'm totally on board with you guys on this. The, the, just starting with a smile. If you can't get to the laugh, start with a smile. Just, 
and if you can't even get to a smile, there's a, there's a really neat hack for getting into a smile. You can't create a smile, take a pen and stick it between your teeth. It will force your, your mouth into a smile. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It actually does work. If you just can't get yourself to smile, just take a, 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 a pen. No, not that way. Horizontally, horizontally. Oh, oh, I, oh I put it in the other way. It works still. <laughs> well, okay, that's fine. You know, it, whatever works. But the point is, when you put it in this oh. way, it forces your mouth into a smile position. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Debbie's losing it. This is great. <laughs> yeah, I just can't. I can't. I'm just. I'm. That's funny as hell. I. I. Okay. Now, I love that. That's a really good hack. That's a really good hack. I'm gonna. I. You guys are just, you tickle my fancy. Listen to this. You sparkle, shine, and you are love. Divine beauty that glimmers with golden rays. You are enough. You're amazing. You make the world smile because you are in it. Know who you are. Live authentically. Be vulnerable. Love fiercely and passionately through the heart space of pure, unconditional love. It's gratitude time, and I love you. That was from, I, I, I that was from 2017, and I wrote that. That's beautiful. Nice, yeah. And I'm sharing it because what I want you all to do is to write a paragraph to yourself about how much you love you. You know, one of the things, one of the tools I give people after they write their list of I am statements is to write themselves a love letter. Mm-hmm. A juicy, glorious, cheesy, if you were in junior high school writing a note that you were going to sh- that you were going to be you know slip into this really cute guy or girl you know or you're in high school and you're thinking oh my god I want I want that person well you need to be that person you want so writing a love letter to yourself and that becomes a tool it becomes a tool so that that moment and that day that comes up where you don't think that you're that that you, you are worthy and deserve you pull it out and you go ah oh. That's right. I love me and I love all these things about myself. Oh, my God. And use these tools. Use these tools as something to sink your teeth into. And don't forget to, you know, and don't forget the pen. The pen is great. The pen is powerful. But I love that bit, too, especially I, I love the poem. I mean, the thing that you wrote in 2017, that was that was gorgeous. That's a beautiful thing to say to yourself. If you say that to yourself every single day, I don't care what place you're in. You're going to be in a good place in a week. Yeah. Here, I'm going to I'm going to grab it and pop it in here for everybody. Okay, here you go. You should post it in the group. Absolutely. This is why I mean, I love my co-hosts. I love you guys. I love the the, the co-hosts I have on every single day. I, I actually want to put in a little promo that I, I have never really done before. I'm doing it this week. Um, we, we sadly lost two co-hosts this week. Dean, Dean McMurray has decided he's got too many things on his plate, so he's taking off. I still have Shelly working with me on Tuesday. And on Mondays, uh, Louis D'Souza and I are losing Amy Blackford. She also has too much on her plate, so she's going up to do some other stuff. And in the past, I've always just uh, used the law of attraction. And I've reached out uh, to various sources and so forth to find co-hosts to fill in, because I'm trying to get every single episode up to three people every single show, because I think that's a really magical number. Just the energy is always fabulous when there are three of us. So I'm going to try something different. I'm going to see if there are any listeners who have always wanted to be co-hosts. So if if, you, if it ever occurred to you, it'd be fun that's to be on the cool. show. Why not? You know? Hey, Amy Blackford and Louis D'Souza were listeners. That's how they came on the show. That's how they got into being co-hosts in the first place, just by listening and say, hey, I'd like to be on the show. I think I could contribute yep. something. Think, okay, come on, let's do it. So I'm inviting people. I'm, I'm just proactively saying, if anyone here is listening in who thought, you know, it'd be fun to do a show, maybe do a once a week show, something like that, well, reach out to me. Like I said, we got an opening on Monday and an opening on Tuesday. Uh, we record these at 4 p.m. New York time, 1 p.m. Los Angeles time, again, um, do the calculation to figure out what time zone you're in. But we do it uh, at that time on Monday or Tuesday, depending on which show it is. You know, if you're interested, send me an email, walt at LOAToday.net or use the LOA Today app. Send in a message to me that way or send me something by Facebook. Anyway, you want to get a message to me. And let's talk. Let's see. You know, perhaps it might be a good fit for you to be a part of the program. So just saying, if you want to be a co-host, contact me. That's cool. Do it now. You know what? It's better. It, I like it because if it's someone who is new in the game, and trying to learn more about the law of attraction, they'll be able to pose us direct questions. True. Who's new? Yeah. 
which by the way is how, how I started the program in the first place. I wanted to learn how this stuff worked. That's why I started the podcast. And it is totally. a wonderful way to learn the law of attraction. Let me tell you, it works beautifully. Plus you get to talk to really high powered co-hosts. I mean, I've had some of the best co-hosts in the world. So it's wonderful. Yeah. Good stuff. Seri seriously, seriously. I, we, so here guys, look, summoning power. It's a beautiful card. I like that. Summoning power, instinct, intellect, control. Really pretty. I love the artwork. Isn't that is that awesome? So summoning yeah. the, summon, summoning in your your power, summoning in your power. All these cards. And by the way, I I'm a firm believer that cards give us confirmation. So well, yeah, we we have a lot of yeah. uh, experience with that here on the show. I mean, we've we've been doing cards in various guises here for a couple of years now, yeah. and it's it's astonishing how the exact card that gets pulled addresses directly what we're, what we're talking about in the conversation and usually talks to about 10 people in the audience all at the same time. It's just amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think that, yeah. And, oh, look at this. Here's, if we have the divine masculine. Mm. Low, lower it a little bit. I can't quite see the image. Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh -huh. Isn't that nice? Yeah, look how beautiful. beautiful this is. Seriously. This is a good artist. Like, really good artist. Okay. This divine masculine. It's electric and it's active power. Our divine masculine. There was actually somebody who who did a Facebook post today talking about the 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 beautiful power of men, the power of their being, just how beautiful the divine masculine is. And it is. It's it's a. There's something about there's something about that that it's so important. Recognizing the beauty that you are gentlemen and for women understanding that your divine your divine masculine is also just as important just as important and for men our divine on the on, on the flip tapping into our divine feminine as well mm -hmm. oh, yeah. all of it's important but yeah our, our our i think it's a really good thing if there's men in your life that you take a minute and appreciate them appreciate them for how they show up Men have a strength and vigor that women don't have. I don't care how sexist you all want to be. You don't. <laughs> okay. Men deserve to be recognized for the beauty that they are and the strength that they bring to us, the protective nature that they are, all of it. And I, I think that I love that the, the divine masculine came up because that's our that's our beautiful power. Of strength. So we're summoning the power and apparently we're going to summon in the power of the divine masculine today. That's a beautiful okay. thing. Your strength. Right. Yeah. Your perseverance. Feel it come in and, and love that. I have a, I have a bit too much divine masculine sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean too much? Meaning I can get out of balance sometimes. Oh, and well, I can go, I can do that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and I can go into this whole, like, you know, look, it, the out, anything out of balance is probably, oh, God, I just did it again. I'm sitting here shuffling and it just came up again. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, this, this is this, like. This is pay attention is what this is saying. This is pay attention. And yeah. the fact is it means to summon it in, to let go, to get back to your at one mint with source. Walt said, get into your meditation space where you're in your neutrality from observation. Neos said he stepped away. He stepped away from the edge mm -hmm. and he let it go and he summoned in the power. He summoned in his knowingness. So summon in your power. Know it's there. Connect. And if you feel disconnected right now, like I said before, and it's from Abraham Hicks, if you were a toaster, you're not going to get turned on without plugging into source energy. <clears throat> So summon in your power, plug yourself in to source energy, period, getting yourself at one minute. And that's what that means for me. But I, I also have to add in, too, it, it, it's, I know for myself, from my own experience, it can be a little disconcerting to try to do that exercise, especially for the first time, if you don't feel like it's actually happening. And that, that's an issue I've had for the longest time. It's one of the reasons I'm actually doing the Thai boot camp to kind of break through. So I'm always having that complete experience the source but even if you don't feel like it's happening guess what it's still happening 
Yeah. So, so it doesn't it, it doesn't actually matter whether you're feeling. It. I mean, yes, it's a whole lot better when you do feel it, and certainly when you do feel it, you want to celebrate it and get excited and so forth. But even if you don't feel it, just pretend that it's happening. Just pretend. Imagine what it's like. Pretend that it's happening, and 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 create in your mind what would it feel like to have that source energy coming into me, and that alone will do it. You don't actually have to feel it in order to get the benefit. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, we should, no. We should have an episode about ancestors. Mm. Because I think I think if we dove deeper into that, I think it would be able to give people a level of confidence that they never had before, including after they learned the law of attraction and learned that they were in control of their life. Once you dig into your ancestors and see who you were before, they have this cartoon called Avatar. Um to where it's like basically one being is being reincarnated and they're mm-hmm. like, they're supposed to be like the, the you know supreme or whatever and it's like it's weird because it's different avatars over different lifetimes but they he's been able to tap in and speak to them all of them at the same time um, but that kind of creates separation like he's talking to a separate avatar as opposed to him talking to himself that had just experienced a separate life. Mm. It's a whole weirdness going on, but if we got into our ancestors, I think we'd be able to give people a way more confidence in themselves and their abilities. It's interesting you mentioned that too, because that, that's a key portion of Thai boot camp. You actually dig in, they call it your transgressors, but you dig into it and a lot of it's tied to your parents and grandparents and the people who came before you. So it's exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, it's a little bit different because like your parents, obviously, and your grandparents, people you've lived at the same time frame with, you kind of mm-hmm. see through differently from someone like another life a thousand years ago. That was actually mm-hmm. like your parent is them. You're you, but this was actually you before your <laughs> aunt, your aunt. You before the you. Yeah, when you woke up as a baby, crying out of your mother's womb with amnesia. Before that, um, if you believe in that type of stuff, uh, that you is different from your grandparent who you've sat and ate with, and you know wasn't. What you feel wasn't true. You know what I mean? So it goes deeper. I know Debbie's bubbling up. But she's, I know she's in. <laughs> oh, I am because that's right. I got to, t- well, I'm smiling right now because listen, last night, uh, I, I spent, I don't know, uh, Miranda's here visiting right now and they're getting ready to leave. And we were going through, I don't know my biological father. So we were going through, my ge- genealogy report, which is, is a total unbelievable trip. Mm. I'm like seven, I'm seven percent Asian. Mm. Um, no, y'all, it, and it, I got the one, the CGI one that goes all the way back into like the, the, the 600 whatever. Wow. I mean, yeah, I come from, I come from Iran, Iraq, Asia, Africa. I literally have roots in every place all over the world. I could see that. I could see that. Yeah, it's a trip, you guys. I have, it's just amazing. I can't even get over it. It's really cool. But I love the depth of going there. And how much can we appreciate all the people that came before us? Crazy enough. I know the show's great. And I'm not a one-upper type guy. I just remembered (laughs) Earlier today, I found out I have a sister that I didn't know I had. Oh, wow. Oh, I wow. I'm going to handle that. I don't know. My goodness. To, uh. Yeah, so, yeah, that was. There, there's an episode all by itself right there. Yeah, I don't know how that goes. I don't know. Well, yeah, that's take, a. Take, take some time to digest it first. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> That sounds like a lot of fun. All right, guys. Well, I have to, I'm going to go say goodbye to everybody because they're going to be heading out. And I have once again enjoyed being here with you. I love you guys so much. And everybody who's been watching, thank you so much for spending this time with us. And any types of nuggets that you've gotten from this, please go ahead and comment and let us know what you love Mm -hmm. and what, and what you'd like more of. Okay. You guys make the show so great. You guys make the show too. You guys, the the pair of you just. The amazing insights. Really, really appreciate it very much. Thank you, especially to our podcast listeners everywhere. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.